A little repair on the go, this is the glove box retaining strap, stops the glove box opening all the way, it slots in and you sort of twist that to one side, well this has, was missing its, uh, it was missing the this PC, it snapped off. I've used one of these bullet type electrical splicing um, connectors, pulled the splice piece out of it and drilled a small hole through, uh, I don't know what, I think there's a three mil hole through there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder it in position. You could actually crimp it on, but the centre of the splice is a dead end. It's sort of open-ended, open-ended. In the middle is a, a join for two wires to sort of butt up against, so you can't actually squash it. But I think it'll be better if I sold it. Now, these will solder, so the solder should sort of wrap it. That should be quite solid. I think that'll work, and I can thread that into the glove box and finish the glove box off then, because at the moment it's hanging out glove box opens too far so this will finish that I've, I've stripped it and I'm just gonna um, give it some oil just to take that rust off the top there then polish it back and then that's that job done right so just feed the solder in I'm hoping this will lock the wire in position it should do might not that's what it's all about experimentation Right, we've done that. Right, the theory was good, but when this snapped, it must have snapped too short. It's critical the length for the glove box to to operate properly. I couldn't close it. I couldn't actually fit that because it's too short. It won't go between the two spacings, uh, fixing points on the glove box. So that's scrap. Luckily, I had some bike brake cable. Uh, and I've got an old bike round the back of the, the garage. Uh, don't ask me what it's doing there, it's a Rally Commando, I bought it as a classic restore. Anyway, it's just donated its brake cable, which happens to be the same as the cable on the car. So, well not far off anyway, so I've cut that longer. Two more of these um, bullet connectors ripped apart and then drilled out with a 3 mil drill. So we'll re-solder that now, and then we've got ourselves a, a new old stock glove box uh, retaining strap. If that's what you want to call them. So I'll solder those up and I'll go and fit it. Yeah, say that one didn't work. Okay, so a new one being made. That's it, I've done it. So if, you have a, if your cable ever breaks, you want to make one as close to the factory as you can, then that's how you do it. You've got your electrical bullet connector, take the inner out of it, drill a 3 mil hole through the middle, get some bike cable in the end. A very good soldering iron you need though. Uh, this one is an 80 watt iron, that's an Antex 80 watt. I'm going to keep it off the floor there. Uh, hold on, we'll just support that one over there. Hold on. That's an Antex 80-watt. You'll need, forget it with a small 25-watt iron, you just will not get up to temp. So you've, you've got to have an 80-watt iron minimum, I reckon, to if you want to do this uh, modification for your glove box or your refurb to your glove box retaining uh, strap. Okay, so we'll go and fit that now and see how it looks. Right, just, just poking the, the thing through the, the clip for the first hole of the dash. About to go through. Okay, through and out, and then into that one on the glove box, and then there you go. It's nice and clean as well. Great stuff. So it should just about be the right position. I'm hoping, yeah, as, as you pull it up, I'm there. So I wanted a little bit of extra room on my glove box opening because I've got me, me MP3 running at the back. But you set this to what height you want. Your cable, you'd have to just get your right measurement on it just to get it to open where you want it to open. I'm just going to be probably about there on my. I think some of them designed to open about there. It depends how you want it to go. Right, but I've got finished the article. I've put a grommet through this. I'm not sure again if that was ever fitted with a grommet, but it seemed to me that it would need one, seeing that this slowly edges away at your, your paint. I uh, know that I grommet over the years would probably cut through with the continued action possibly. There's not a lot of uh, movement on it there. It's going to take a lot to wear that away because as you come up with the glove box, the tension's actually off it. It's not actually pulling down in a sort of cheese cutter motion. It's more pushed up and just pushing out of the way. So grommet on there could be uh, an improvement or they might have had one. But it seemed right and it looks neater and then you don't uh, it'll start scratching the paint. So that's that's improved. I'm coming to that angle as you see, which isn't too bad, it's just uh, it's just probably a little bit, I think factory was about there, so we're about an inch higher to get me to the 
the MP3 module which mounts just here so you can access that, close the lid, get to your memory stick and close your, your glove box. There's also another memory stick going in on the driver's console at the side where the choke goes on the shroud. That's a USB stick. You've actually got a choice. You've got your hard drive, uh, not your hard drive, but your 16 gig card that sits on the module here with your sort of what I call the house records, which are the, the records that live with the car. That'll be the 70s um, recordings. There'll be some 70s radio shows on there and stuff that you'd hear as the car would have come out of the factory. Uh, radio transmissions actually with adverts on and also BBC stuff and on its heart on the on the permanent drive and then your your day-to-day -day listening is done by putting the USB stick here and then you pick which memory to choose from on the radio itself so you'd, you'd put your USB in at the side it can be a 16 gig flash cut uh, stick or whatever you want 8 gig stick typically you'd be a, probably a 4 or an 8 stick um, and then you'd go for your radio, you'd hit the button and that would then check, swap the location from the glove box house, uh, what I call the house um, memory card, to your current stuff. So you could have a new album out or something, just stick it in the side and you've got straight access to your, your latest records. Uh, and you want to go back to classic mode, you hit the mode switch again and it'll flip back to the, the glove box's uh, hard drive uh, memory stick. So that's how that goes, so looking really tidy there. That cable looks better. I'm glad that the other cable didn't uh, work because it was too rusty anyway. So that's clean, tidy, looks looks good. So done in the glove box there. Look at it from the back. Grommet in there. What I've done as well, the T piece at the back, I've put grommets on either end of it just in case it tried to start doing a rattling situation against this uh, and you'd get an annoying rattle and be wondering where it's come from. So that's those are adjusted just at the end so that it can't if you, if you look at that now I'm not going to get an annoying rattle there and also we'll be looking out for things like that when we're on the dash uh, we've got the opportunities to make sure nothing does rattle uh, if you notice on your cables to your heater controls they're wrapped in um, a foam again that's a rattle situation you've got to watch out for things like that when the glove, when the dashboard goes back in you're not going to get the chance to uh, get to it as easy as you've got now so that's why I'm going to look at all the cables and make sure nothing is um, is in the way another thing I've got to mention about the glove box dash that slight mod that I made to it um, is that you get a, a rubber action when it when it opens in the old system with the cable and the T pieces this is what I mean by the cable the uh, that's a retaining strap and it's two T pieces. You'd get, I remember this on mine, you'd get, when you open the glove box, you'd get a metallic sound and it's, it, it would be a harsh stop. So it's sort of like click hard. With those rubber grommets on the T piece at the end, when you let go, it bounces. So you actually, it's a soft, a softer operation rather than it slamming onto the cable. So I think that's a very subtle, but a little finishing touch really. It just seems smoother. Again, we've got the purest questions of, oh, it wouldn't be like that. But how, how, how much different is that? You know, I mean, it's standard there. The grommet could be different. And then, you, you know, you've got the two uh, bump stops inside the rubber grommets on the T-piece. And it's not, no, but, but I'm improving it. I'm doing what I think they should have done. I mean, these are the kind of things you'd get if you were coach building on a Jaguar or something. They'd be looking at all these kind of small details. Was, well, as Ford just threw them out as uh, quick, quick as they could. You know, um, so why not? Uh, I think it's a good, it's a good move. See how that just bounces. Uh, so I'm on with that, and that, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make modifications along the way, uh, as long as overall it doesn't lose any character, which it, it isn't doing. Um, I'm, I'm up for that. You know, I'm up for improving it. Even the lights on the on the the clocks. Um, I'm tempted to try LEDs. Um, especially on the centre console ones where they melt the plastic um, sockets at the back of the centre console. You often, you often see them um, melted. So, and they're never very that bright either. Uh, so I'll see what LEDs look like. It might be that they look, look too obviously LED and it's just like that looks wrong. If it looks something right, then I will do it. And you get if you, anything to get a bit of brightness. They're never the brightest dashes, these. Uh, I do like the glow of filament bulbs, it does give it a period feel, but they're not bright enough, and when you do get them bright, then it starts to melt and burn, so 
if they're doing an LED that's got a similar uh, Kelvin to a, um, these light bulbs, then maybe. But we'll have to just see what what they do. Um, that's that's wrap, a wrap for Sunday because I only did a couple of hours today. I know you've seen a lot of this in the last four videos uh, that I've done, um, and the, uh, the dash rebuild is carrying on up until probably maybe seven or eight video part eight because I'm getting 15 minute segments and YouTube's really buggered it up with that um, I don't know how to get it back on track whether the Google Plus comment systems buggered it up and also the, the 15 minute limit has made it difficult for me to edit films because just as you're getting into the swing of it you, you're up to your 15 minutes you know I mean I used to like to put an intro on put a little bit of art into it uh, just for a laugh because I didn't really want to do a sort of hardcore documentary rebuild video. I wanted it to have some fun in my films. I wanted it to be a bit of my personality in them, not just a clinical, this is my job, this is how you do it type thing, which I'm sure you've gathered by now. But um, the 15 minute thing has really messed that up because, as I say, you get halfway through doing it and you run out of time on the on the, on the on the time bar there when you're doing your edits half an hour would have been okay I could have got away with half an hour because I think half an hour is about right for your attention span and stuff when you're doing a short film like this but 15 minutes you're just getting going you're halfway really into it and you know it, it starts to pick up its pace and um, so it's it spoilt it really YouTube have, have messed it up um, that's because I put too many songs on and Whilst I was allowed to put those songs on, the default is they'll knock you out until you prove otherwise. I just haven't got round to saying some look, you know, that's that's not right because I've got about 60 films that I'd have to look at and say this is fair use, this is fair use, that's fair use, and it, I just I can't be bothered with it all. Uh, I don't see why they should have done it. It's not the, necessarily the right attitude saying you can't be bothered with it, but at the end of the day, for me. Um, I'm more into building the car and 15 minutes just has to be the way for now you never know they might restore the account I wish there was another video service you could upload to and I could give you the links and maybe someone will come along and fill the gap that YouTube have made that's it for now that, that was waffle and I will need that to fill in the the video to get it up to 15 see ya over and out. So that's it. Um, hope you like them little more improvements. We're co constantly moving on. Really happy. I'm managing to adapt and find my way around any little hitches. Um, well, I'm happy with that finish there. I pretty much accept that. Um, if I saw that, I wouldn't know that was been painted in. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Okay. Over and out. Uh, thanks for watching and the usual stuff. We'll see you next week. Um, probably a Monday evening. Um, just got a bit of Christmas shopping to do, but I'll get back onto this. And when we see you, we'll be on with the radio. We're waiting for George, and we say hello to George and Ray, the Jedi, who's the uh, radio repair guy. He lives in Ireland, and he fixes radios. He's an expert. Um, and George, who's one of our followers on YouTube, Irish Ham, he has kindly taken delivery of two radios that I had. One was Swampies, another one was one that I bought, P21 radios, Blaupunkt Hamburgs, period pieces for this car, nice piece of kit. They weren't working, he's fixing them up, they're on the way back. So we say hello and thanks to Irish George and Ray the Jedi. Um, this bench hopefully can look like yours one day. I've got, I'm, I'm starting George, I'm starting Ray, I've got a power pack there, look, it's, I'm going to build up some tech stuff, I'm going to get my electronic stuff out, because I can do electronics, not to your level, um, more on digital stuff, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll like, I say hello there to Ireland, okay, over and out for Sunday night, thank you and good night.